this is the Sears Roebuck and Company Consumer Guide for Fall of 1909. And the back and front cover are very, very similar. Here's the spine. 1909 catalog. The 78 to 96 Fulton. 73 to 87 Displains and 13 to 31 Wayman Streets, Chicago, Illinois, USA. Number 118. Nice color cover. On the inside, we have a picture of the warehouse with headquarters printed. On the back, the advertising building. And here's our title page. Six chairs free. We issue you a profit sharing certificate. Um, six handsome cane seated dining room chairs. Read the last 16 pages in the catalog, the yellow pages. Price and quality guarantee. All certificates are good for orders up, for orders amounting to $50. You'll get six nice free chairs if you spend $50, so much, that was a lot of money in 1909. Uh, first, we have a sort of an introductory um, double page spread of factories that we own or control in addition to our 40 acre plant. Chicago, Chicago, um, Iowa, Wisconsin, Kentucky, New Hampshire, Minnesota, Michigan, New York, New York, I mean, they got a lot of factories. Um, they, here's, like, they have a vehicle factory, a stove, fact, a stove foundry, a cream separator factory, Shoe factory, camera factory, interesting to have a camera factory, uh, washing machine factory, saw factory, fireproof steel combination lock safe factory, uh, the economy cream separator factory, so they got two cream separator factories, agricultural imp implement factory, furniture factory, gun and revolver factory, organ factory, and I'll tell you what, they had a whole factory dedicated to one musical instrument and that tells you how important organs were at this time period because that was entertainment there was really no radio there was no television this was 1909 there an organ and a sheet music was entertainment they have a paint factory six machine wallpaper mill so and a plumbing goods factory so they've got a lot of stuff covered here this book will be sent to any address free by mail postcard on application. Simple rules for ordering, and this is how you get yourself your catalog. Our new 40-acre home right here in Chicago. And this is a lot of just background information about the company. Something we didn't really see when we were uh, looking at our Montgomery Ward catalog a few days ago. This this series catalog has a lot of pictures and background information about Sears. A message of good cheer before you start looking at the products. I guess they help you read all this. Uh, this, tell, this is like the privacy policy. It tells you how transactions are confidential. No order will be accepted for less than 50 cents. Um, our compliments to the retail merchant. Our liberal terms of shipment. Our cash on demand terms. Uh, about our prices, how to order, about substitution, how to send money, methods of shipment, about omissions, express shipments, freight shipments, about unprofitable shipments, interesting. We frequently receive orders which we term unprofitable shipments, which means that the shipment would not be profitable to our customer. For example, a party living far distant may order a dollar's worth 
of sugar to go by express. So yeah, let's see what they're getting at. About delayed shipments, how to return goods, damage claims, returns, freight and express rate. So this is the chart you would use, presumably with a magnifying glass, to calculate your shipping to wherever you lived. And it's, it's we zoom in. Like if you were in Arizona, they'd ship to Benson, Flagstaff, Holbrook, Phoenix, Prescott, Seligman, Salomonville, Tucson, and Yucca. How to figure express charges if you want to ship quickly. And um, here's their banking information. Um, let's begin the catalog itself and we start with jewelry. And this is 1909, so we have jewelry. We start also with jeweler's tools. Oops. Watchmaker tools and materials. Lots of uh, watch and more components making watches. And then the nice pocket watches with the, as we talked about on the last video, pocket watches could be customized to suit the owner's tastes like it. for example this has an elk he might be into hunting or nature um, this has a fish so he may be a fisherman and so forth and so on you have more designs a lot of the elk or the hunting designs the railroad uh, railroad men um, or you could have a watch with his wife's name on it here's the different uh, watch fob chain designs you could get and you, you saw the old pictures the men would wear that on their vest they'd have the chain and so they'd probably want to get a chain that matched their personality these are stick pins that would go in ties here's the men's rings Now we're getting into women's rings. Uh, brooches, pins, hat pins, that things in that enter, fleur-de-lis, uh, Masonic and Shriner, anchors for sailors, scout emblems. Lockets, women's jewelry. Jewelry boxes. Here we go to nib pins, pen and ink pins, silverware. Clocks. Clocks were a big deal back then. Just to give you an idea, a dollar seventy for this small mantle clock, three dollars for this wall clock, four seventy for this very nice clock here. And we get some very nice clocks. This is still pretty Victorian times. Um, here's China. China cabinet. If you open your China cabinet with these designs. And it's that's that very Victorian design here with the serving platters and the creamers and butter dishes and gravy boats and all of that. Now we're into lighting. Musical goods department, pianos and organs. Uh, a, an organ and a piano, these were investments. So these were your, this was entertainment. So obviously it costs a lot of money. $115 was a lot of money. Perhaps 10 months of salary, depending on what your profession was.
2435 buys the new Beckwith Cottage home organ. 25 bucks. But having an organ, and if you were entertaining, was probably pretty essential back then. Here's violins, uh, much less expensive, but nonetheless, a musical instrument was a necessity. Musical instruction was important. Lutes and mandolins. Uh, I would say this is something you didn't see in the last catalog because there was a lot more immigrants by 1909. And these are instruments that they would prefer to play. Banjos is another thing. Um, things have cooled down since the Civil War. This is a southern Ozark kind of instrument. Um, more organs, uh, accordions, another thing that many immigrants would uh, choose at that time. Harmonicas, obviously are pretty cheap, brass instruments, and now we get to carriages, buggies, conveyance. Uh, horse and buggy was still the, the way to get around in 1909. There were, there were a lot of cars at this point, but Horse and buggy was still incredibly common, along with the saddles, harnesses, and the things that you needed for horse and buggy to get up. And a good saddle, too. Lots of horseback riding. Uh, here we get into wallpaper. How to hang, they have instructions on how to hang wallpaper. And then they show you the different designs, which are all very Victorian looking. Now we're getting into weapons. The interestingly, in the 1912 uh, Collier, Colliers, I had this exact same picture for this hammerless shotgun, which was um, being sold. And of course, we're only talking about less than three years difference. Um, these are fine hunting weapons or skeet shooting, which was another pastime. A shotgun. Here we get into pistols. Um, the Old West is kind of over, so the pistols have a distinctly, um, strikingly more modern look. There's still a few holdovers, like the Derringer, but um, a lot of these are much more modern double action pistols. As we and look, some automatic pistols have already come upon for consumer buying. Uh, the last catalog I showed you. These were still in the experimental stages. Ammunition, different bullets, and then we get into the gun smith tools or the cleaning kits and so forth that you would need. Reloading kits, bullet molds, powder horns if you were black powder shooting, um, cartridge cases and belts. There's some uh, daggers, shoulder holsters, Uh, hunting clothing More Hunting clothing and now we get into other sporting goods such as boxing pugilism at that time There's also it looks like pool sticks uh, Baseball equipment Uniforms mitts um, Your camping equipment your hammock your clothing that you'd wear, fishing tackle, canoes. Saw a lot of canoe ads in that Collier's too. I think there was a canoeing fad around this time. More fishing equipment. Different types of rope and twine. Now we get into intense um, camera equipment. This is 1909. We're still dealing with. Uh, fairly primitive cameras. There's that reflex camera that we saw in Colliers. Hmm. Shutters and lenses. Here we get into um, magnifying glasses, hearing aids, they call it hearing horns. 
vest protectors, uh, reading glasses, binoculars, spy glasses, telescopes, some different things in this catalog than we saw in the other ones. Now we get into gramophones. Um, these guys play wax cylinders. They, um, that's the wax cylinder right there. They put it in there. It was it was a hard wax. It, it engraved the same kind of grooves you'd find on a vinyl record, and then it played, and the needle went off of those grooves. I have a few wax cylinders. I've got a video if you go way back on my channel, or I might do another one. I wonder if they sell wax cylinders. Now we're going straight to medicine. Uh, Dr. Wilden's Quick Cure Stomach Remedy. Bronze Vegetable Cure for Female Weakness. Dr. Echo's Heart Cure. You may prefer to have your physician look at it. Yeah, go to your doctor. Don't buy this snake oil. This is uh, Collier's Magazine did a expose on medicine fraud uh, shortly after this time period. And a lot of this medicine was quackery. I mean, nerve and brain tablets. I mean, seriously. Cat cataract cures. Female pills. Blood builder. White lily face wash. You get into toilet water and perfume. Bust cream or food. This was for enlargement of the bust. Um, I don't think it worked, and but this is consistent with the wide variety of quackery that was available at this time period. So much of the stuff was giving you promises that would not be kept. Isn't it funny how that never happens nowadays? Um, dandruff shampoo, hair tonic to help your hair grow back. They've always had that problem. Um, then there's makeup, rouge, and powder stuff like that. Here's rocking chairs. Lots of rocking chairs. That's another thing that is almost a luxury item. Uh, here's some uh, vanities, furniture, buffets, china cabinets, revolving bookcases, sectional bookcases, in tables, dressers, pedestals, music cabinets, um, iron beds. Got a picture. Davenport, so it's like a type of couch. They don't really use that word nowadays too much. Uh, bed springs and water matches. They're like your, your, make your heavenly bed back then. Go all in and buy the softest stuff. Shows how the mattress is made. Elastic felt mattresses. Day beds. Wash, well, it's a washing machine. Turbo ball bearing washer, six dollars and fifty cents. Typewriters. Here we get into uh, trades, blacksmith tools. Very cool stuff. Still a viable career. Nineteen oh nine. And then you get your hardware. Plumbing. Uh, here's your ovens. Uh, much more modern than the Montgomery Awards catalog. Uh, the ovens have come a long way. Uh, now we get into shirts. Work shirts, 38 cents. Night shirts. Remember, like Scrooge in Christmas Carol? That's what men wore to bed. And that's, you know, that kind of thing. They slept in something just like that. Uh, let's see. Collars and ties. I think I told you the collar is a separate piece of separate garment. Shirts didn't have collars. Here's your ties. Ladies' shoes.
smart dress smart dress man section here six to eight dollars for suits these are your 99 fashions. Interesting uh, thing I'll tell you. Um, they said 1909. They said uh, 1910, 1902. When they asked what time it was, if it was, if it was four minutes after six, they would say six four. They didn't say O, oh. and the reason for that is because before we had digital readouts on things, we didn't ever say the O. Oh. We would just say the numbers in order. So if you listen to really old radio broadcasts, when they give you the time, they won't say they'll say four minutes after six, six four. They won't say six oh four. Look at those hats. Uh, they got a little slightly better art. To sell the ladies' hats because that was important. They knew where the money was coming from. Look at the prices. So they did better artwork on certain things than others. And, uh, undergarments and lingerie. Some children's clothing. Shirt waists. Uh, a shirt waist was literally a shirt. Um, they called them shirt waists because they were they weren't a dress. They were a, a separate shirt. They just call them blouses and shirts now. Farm We go straight from women's clothing to farm implements. How about that? Like plows. Like shirts, plows. This is straight up farming stuff here. And now we just get to shaving supplies. Some more shaving supplies. Pocket knives. Scissors, safety scissors. Knives, uh, curtains, and drapes. Doors and house stuff. Axe heads. Hardware tool, tools, planes, sanding and stuff. Knife sharpening, lathes. And some light fixtures, hand cells, plumbing, and we literally, with all of the fanfare in the beginning, there's not a lot of fanfare in the end, it leaves off right here. So, there you have it. That is the Sears Roebuck and Company Fall 1909 catalog, and I really hope you enjoyed that. So, um, here's a little look back in the past if you're interested. And, um, until next time. Oh, by the way, if, if you would, do me a big favor. If you haven't already, if you could subscribe, if you like what I do, that lets me know. And if you could uh, click the thumbs up too, I'll know if this is the kind of video you keep on a, you want me to keep making. Uh, I also read every single comment that you leave. And I, although I may take a little bit of time in doing it, I do get around to answering them. So, um, I take it seriously and I appreciate all of your input. So, anyway, if you like what I'm doing, let me know. And, um, I'll come back every night at 8 o'clock. Bye.